All right, welcome everybody to part two of our Fire Phoenix class. Last week we started with the dark red, kind of blew in the design of the Phoenix. A little bit of the mapping of where the fire was with a dark red. And now we're going to go in with a little bit brighter red, some oranges, and we might be able to get to some yellows today. But otherwise, this is part two. Let's get started. I'm going to start out with Wicked Red. I'm just going straight out of the bottle right now. I'm going to add a little bit of reducer. Normally I like to reduce the paint a little bit prior to. But you can do it this way. It works fine. Put a little bit of reducer in it. Probably about 20%. And I'm just going to mix it up in the cup. Put my finger over the needle and just kind of pull back and you'll see it bubble up inside the cup. Okay, now this is just pure red. So now this is going to be our brightest red that you're going to see. From this color on, we're going to go a little bit towards orange. And I'm going to spray in here and just kind of get a little bit closer to what we want the fire to look like. Now in this stage, you're going to see a little bit more of, of defining the actual shape of the fire. But once again, you still want to go pretty broad with this color because we still have a whole bunch of colors to come in and get tighter as we go. So those people that are watching our videos, remember this is shot live on iVlog. So you could go to iVlog and you could actually watch us live, ask questions, there's chat in there. So you could talk to other artists while we're doing this. And it makes it to where I can answer questions if you have a question going, how do you, what do you look for here? Or how do you do this? Or my paint splattering, how do I get rid of that? You could ask the questions right live and I'll answer as we go. So it's something really cool to hang out with instead of just watching it on YouTube. You're able to watch it live on iVlog and kind of participate with it. So I'm going to go in here and define the wings a little bit more, define the head a little more. Remember Part one, we took it and we were just really broad with it and kind of just, ah, this is going to go over here and a little bit over here. So now with this color, we're going to start shaping it and to where you kind of see what's going on on this. But at this stage, you don't want to do too much detail. You want to get a little bit of the detail going in there. But remember, you want it to look like the, the fire is creating the bird, not the birds inside the fire. So it's kind of a different mindset when you're creating it. Is if a piece of flame came up and kind of made this little design, how would it look instead of, okay, that's a bird's wing. So it's kind of playing with the shape of the, the fire more than drawing a bird. You know, like this this part of the feather right here, you might have a little bit of a wisp coming off of a little bit of fire. Now since this is the red, you're not going to see this too much as we get brighter. This color, you'll be surprised on how dark this color actually gets. So let's 
go ahead and color in this. Now, wherever the red is, that is where your colors are going to go on top of. So if you're looking at this and you go, okay, I really want this, I want the yellow and orange to be out here, then your red has to go beyond that. So you want to make sure that everything is tight and within inside of its little area there. So if you say, okay, I want the bird, I want the feather down here, we got to bring the red down a little bit further and kind of move everything down a little bit. Now because I have the, the bird head drawn in here, I'm going to keep on keeping that shape going so that way I don't lose my image and kind of waste all the uh, drawing that I've already done. So every single stage is going to be built up on top of this stage. Might want to come down here with the, the red, kind of brighten this up a little bit. Now with the smaller smaller cup on the airbrush, I have to fill it a little more often. This is where the siphon fed, having a bottle. When you're doing fire colors, it's nice to have a bottle and then you just switch back and forth. I'm using the high performance 4012 reducer. Or this might be the W500. I'm not sure if it's Wicked or Auto Air Color. Same, basically same reducer, different part number. I'm back feeding it, putting it inside, mixing it up a little bit, just getting it to bubble up a little. Now when you do this, you might want to stand a little bit away from your canvas. Make sure you have uh, paper towels on the ground if you're working on a good floor. Just working on the shop floor, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, now I'm just going to fill in the center of the bird area with, with the red. Don't worry about blotchiness. We kind of want a little bit of kind of blotchy because we call that texture later. It's going to be our nickname for texture is blotchiness. And now we've got the fire over here. Now, one side you might want the wing to be a little bit broader, kind of a little more fire. The other side you want, might want to make it look like it's kind of like the fire is mainly going in this direction, but you still see some of the, the wing over in this direction. So there's a couple different ways to set that up. So here what I'll do is I'll do a real nice hard edge on where that wing is. So what I'm going to do is, is make this right here and then I'll do a section and a section to where it looks like it's just flares kind of coming off of it. Now we do have the whole area is that dark red so it'll still be continuing of that wing but the brighter sections will just be flares coming off of it. So we're changing the wing up and you're actually seeing an a area here, here, and up in here. Instead of just being a complete broad area. You're seeing some of the dark reds in here, but those are going to disappear as we go.
All right. I was checking over there, see if there was any questions. All right, now I'm going to move down to the bottom here. And now we have to think about the, the broadness of the fire. You have the whole entire canvas going up. So you have to think down here where the fire originated from, either it's a real thin point that came up and exploded, or you have a broad area that is going up into this. Now 90% of the time when we're doing fire, we're doing it on a motorcycle or a bike or, or something something that's going to need a big base at the very front. So we're going to start wide just to kind of show you how the fire works. So you have your your dark reds that come all the way out to the edge of your canvas on a on a hood it would go all the way out to the outside edge or real close to it. Now we're going to come in from that area. You notice how I just came in to where you know you see the outside edge of the canvas and then it comes in. You want to slowly come in towards the center with every single color. So if you think I want the yellow this big then your fire has to, your reds have to go out way past that. Now in here I'm just gonna kinda create semi-style as you would call it licks of the flame or fire. And think about the flow direction. So if you have it to where you want it to look like it goes up the center, your flow is going to kind of go towards center. If you want it to look like it's going off to one direction or both directions, you got to think, okay, this is going to be leaning this way, this is going to be leaning this way. What you're creating is the actual wind movement of the fire. We have to take something that's completely still and make it look like it's fluid, make it look like it's moving. Now what I'm thinking of while I'm working on this is that the, the fire's coming up, the wind's shifting it, pushing it, and moving it to this direction. So you're having like this, it's going up and then it gets heavy, kind of pulls down and then moves back up. So that'll get you kind of the, the idea of the, the shape of the fire, what we're looking for in creating that. Now in this red stage, you can still kind of create areas on the black, but once you get out of the red, then you kind of want to stay inside wherever you have your red. So it's something to think about while you're creating the, the motion of this. Is your color is going to be inside that so don't worry about going too broad what you have to worry about is going too thin and then you get these little tiny spaghetti licks on it now as you can see down low I'm just blowing blowing red on. We're just filling up the bottom of the canvas with some red. Mixing up a little more red here. come in here and kind of create some of the bird feet coming out.
his tail feathers. This is kind of a sketch stage, so you can kind of look at the, however you want to draw the feet and just kind of work it in there. And then as we come in with the other colors, we're going to define it all. You might have the fire coming up and, and absorbing some of these feathers in here to create where the bird's coming from. So now I'm just filling this in with the red. Allow some of the red to just kind of blow into the, the dark areas just so we have a little more red in there. Kind of the glowing look. Alright, so now our red color is done. We're not going to clean out the airbrush. We've got red in the airbrush. We're just going to go ahead and throw some orange in with that. and start our orange color. Now what I'm going to do is try this without any white, but we might do a touch of white into the orange just to opaque it up a little bit. Sometimes the oranges are pretty transparent in nature. I'm just going to do about 10% of reducer. Now we know an area that's going to be real bright, which we could do the center of his body. I'm going to spray some orange and see how well that orange comes up. For the first orange, this is actually not that bad. Well, we'll go ahead and work with this one. Kind of give us a little bit more way to figure out if we're going to define something, kind of bring it out. You got to go over it about four times to get 100% orange. Which is alright for this stage. Okay, now everything starts to go in a little bit tighter. Now we're going to leave the outside red. We're going to look at some of the areas and we might want red in here. But we want a little bit of orange to start bringing it out. So this is where we're going to start getting all our, our layers for our depth. We do not want to cover up that red. That red is our shadow color. Think of that as our black. So we're actually working from our black first and bringing our lightness in. Now I'm getting it. I'm getting the orange super wet. I'm almost to the point where it wants to start to skate on me. I'm 
What we could do is come back in and hit it again if we want it a little bit brighter, let it dry up a little bit. But see the way that I barely did any orange in this area here? I did bright orange here, and then I went to almost nothing in here, and then picked back up in that bright orange. And what that gives you is that gives you the look of you got brightness here, it died out, and then it flared back up over here and picked back up. You got a little little burst up here. So just do a little bit of orange and kind of let it flare up. So we'll let this dry up a little bit and then we'll come back in. Now it's fine that it looks kind of like a reddish orange because that's what we want. We want layers. The more layers we could get going, the better off we are. So in here I'm going to do it, just bring some orange into this wing. Bring some of that orange up and flare it up. The object is you don't want to bury your red. You still want some of that red back there. If you bury it too much, then you're going to get the look of... You're going to get the look of a single plane here. So you don't want that. If you're doing fire and you get that look of, well, it looks really flat, it's because most of your colors are blending over your other colors. You kind of want the separation of the two. You know, this wing over here, we want just little tiny flares of it. So we have the red there, so we can come in with the orange and just do kind of the center sections of them and continue with that idea of, of shutting off and turning back on. Now in here we should define a little more of what's going on down here. So what I'm going to do is come in with the orange and just start creating a little more line work with the feathers. The side of the bird, where the bird is.
on his feet, basically like a whole bunch of knuckles on a hand. So what I'll do is I'll start in the center of the knuckle and just kind of fade out going top and bottom. Spray a dot and kind of come off that. Spray a dot kind of come off that. And we don't see much definition yet, but we'll get there. It's all just building of, of layers. Okay, now down here, we need big broad orange. So what we're gonna do is just basically in this whole entire lower area, just go ahead and blow in all basically the orange. This is where it's nice to have a big nozzle opening. I'm using a chrome with a ultra fine nozzle. So it'll take me a while to build up. Now because we're looking at kind of like a explosive style fire here, we don't want to do just straight lines. Otherwise you're going to have this real hair looking surface. So going with circles and allow an overlap on it. And what that'll do is that'll give you that explosive looking fire look to it. Now if you notice so far we haven't used any stencils. On these, on these early stages, you don't really want to do any masking. We'll leave the masking for the later layers. See the way the red is actually out to here, but I'm keeping the orange in a couple inches. Mix up a little more orange. I'm going to go ahead and almost fill up my color cup, even though we're not going to use that much on this next what I'm doing right now. I'm going to actually add white into it and go back over it.
This is the orange with a little bit of reducer. Straight out the bottle. You can see the way the orange, when it dries, it becomes almost a reddish orange. Almost like a GM red orange color on their old trucks. Okay, now I'm going to add just a little bit of white into this, and we're going to opaque this, this orange up. I'm using just the W100, uh, the one wicked white, 001 wicked white. Okay, yeah, there's a, you do see some lines. CJ was saying, you see kind of a almost like a stroke a brush stroke and different lines inside here and you do see that on my end also I see it but because we're doing so many layers that's going to be on top of it that all that brush stroke and lines are just going to create texture and I added probably two percent white to this And we'll test it. Right now, when you look in the in the color cup, you see a lot of white laying on top of it. As we mix that up, we'll see what that does to our orange. And what we might have to do is actually candy, take the, the orange, reduce it down, and spray it back over it. You might get a pale looking orange and we don't want any paleness to this. Okay, let's test it on an area that's going to be real bright. Now you can see how bright that orange is to that red. So that might be a little bit too bright. I'm going to let it dry, see where we're at, and then we'll see if we can throw some orange over the top of that and kind of kick that down a little bit. Now this is what makes fire so difficult to do by looking at an end product because you don't see all these layers that go into this. You just look at the finished product and you go, okay, I need to spray this color, this color, this color, when in actuality it's 14 different layers of different colors. So this is what, you know, watching the stages as you go is what helps you get that, that look of that fire. Okay, I'm going to cheat right now by filling up another airbrush with orange. Just to see what it's going to do. So I can take, take my velocity. Throw some reducer in it, get the needle moving good. Throw a little bit of orange in there. I'm going to reduce this down. We could do it about 50% because we just want it to be, well, let's, let's do 25. Let's start with there. Okay. 
Gotta feed the airbrush. The other thing you can do is take a, a paintbrush, use the back end of the handle, just kind of stir it up, and then back feed a little bit. You know, take this orange and we'll spray it over the top and we can see how our blend is. So that's with a decent amount of orange over the top of it. And to me, it's still too vibrant. So I'm gonna add a little more orange into the airbrush, dilute some of that white that we added in. So this is the, the plane with the colors, trying to get them to where they're not too far apart from each other. Otherwise you'll really see a different layer on it. And you kind of want the layers to kind of slowly blend out. All right, let's go to a different area. See where this orange gets us. Might be a little bit better. So now I'll see where that gets us with the orange. Now you can take the orange and kind of just blow it over some of that red area and allow it to blend it in a little bit. So now you can see how much how much brighter this orange is than the red, but yet this is still going to be really dark compared to our yellow. So we're going to sit there and keep on building up these colors. So we'll go ahead and stay with this opaqueness of this orange. But you can see how much our wing is this wide. You can see how much we lost just going from red to orange. So you can imagine as we build up each color, it's gonna get thinner and thinner and thinner. So right in this area, it might just have a slight yellow streak coming through it. So broadness of the base red. And I'm going to take a still for you guys just to kind of show you these layers.
Then I'll show you some of the some of the lines in it. Okay, now on this wing over here, we just want some some of the flares of the of the fire, right? So we can come in here and kind of get that keep that line going of where the the wing end, and then on this side, just kind of bring some of that orange down into this area, so we can get a little bit of yellow in there. Without orange, you can't have yellow. I'm still not using any stencils at this stage because we kind of want the softness of the bird to kind of go out. Even with the, the licks of the fire here, we don't have any stencils in here. We'll get those in there as we get up to our, our brighter colors. But right now, this is still one of our darker colors. We come in here and Kind of define out the head a little more with the uh, orange. As we're spraying really broad areas of the orange, if the airbrush starts to get tip dry, you can take the airbrush off to the side and just blow in where you're going to have real bright orange. And then come back in and do your defining lines. No reason to sit there and try to clean it out or, or work in it a different way. Just go ahead and just blow a whole bunch of paint off to the side. Because you have a little bit of white in here, it slows down the, the spraying of it. Okay, now I'm going to work on this wing, kind of bring in a little definition into this. Now what you'll see me do is I'll do a real hard edge, almost as if there's a stencil there. And then I'll come off it and kind of fade the paint off of that. And that'll kind of give you that look of having a stencil there, but not, you know, you're just controlling it with the airbrush instead of spraying it way off to the side. So 
And then you can actually start to see how the fire's coming out, a little bit coming up the center. We can broaden this up a little bit. We have the red under here, so we can so we can bring that orange out so we get a little bit bigger on the the yellow when we come in there. Or maybe make it look like there's a little bit of different layers instead of just having one piece coming up. Now we're going to work down a little bit lower here. Continue with this orange, just building up the layer. You may want some of the color to disappear in here, and then other areas really bright with the orange. It's your fire, you get to create it however you want. Just showing you the layers that work for me. All right, for down here, I'm gonna do a little trick that we used to do in the t-shirt and pull the needle back just a hair. Now, I'm not gonna be able to shut the paint off. 
but I can open up the nozzle almost 100% and get it to flow out. So now the needle's out of the way and it's just pure paint. And right, I'm going to switch up to the dagger airbrush because it's the one I got laying around instead of a bottle fed. Be able to blow some of the orange down here so it's not so streaky. It's a decent sized area, so. Just speed it up a little bit. When you're doing cars and bikes and stuff like that, you're going to want to use a, a bigger gun. Bottle fed. I like the using the Omnis. You'll see the difference of the flow on this airbrush. Need a little more, a little more orange in there. a little too bright. Just adding oranges as I go. Now you see how I can test it in the center and it won't mess any of the other artwork up. Because this is the direction that our fire is going to be going, so we'll be coming in with this bright, brighter color anyways. Alright, now we got about the same color that we were. You see the difference of the spray. Now this is a .35. But this nozzle is so old, it's probably a .5 by now. And I could spray some of this color throughout the whole thing, kind of like we do with the red, just kind of blending it all in. No big design. Kind of let it blow all over.
Now we're going to come in with that pure orange, no white in it. Now here comes just, just orange. We're going to spray this and deepen it up. You can see how it deepens up the, the whiteness that was on the orange prior to. Now if you feel like you lost some of your reds, most likely they're still there. You're just not seeing them as much with the brightness. But if you want to, you can always come in with a little bit of red and kind of define it a little bit if you want. What I'm doing is just kind of taking this orange and kind of blending over the edges, kind of smoothing it out, getting a better transition in between the red and the orange. about the same way you would use the, the candy orange if you're spraying with urethanes. Just kind of blends them all together. Alright, now we're going to take golden yellow. A little bit of orange, just to knock that golden yellow into a slight orange color. And just a couple drops of white. Reduce that down a little bit. Mix that up. I'll use a paintbrush to speed it up. So, does anybody have any questions at this stage? How are we? How are we doing so far? Write in our comments below. Make sure you come check us out on Airbrushing for Newbies on Facebook. You could leave comments there. Ask questions. Tell us that our cameraman sucks, our audio guy sucks, or I suck. One or the other, whatever happens first. I'm gonna go ahead and bubble it up in the airbrush a little bit, get that mix going. Make sure you always use your color cup cap. And make sure the little hole on the very top is always open. If it's not open, then your paint's not gonna flow. When you're doing a lot of painting, It'll get clogged up. Okay, let's try this color right in this area. All right, now you can see some yellow coming out. Now remember, this is mixed with the orange, so look how yellow that looks on top of that orange. So this is why it's important to kind of blend into the colors and kind of get going on it. You don't want to just get a real bright color and start layering it on there. Okay, now we have to come in even more on that orange. But now you can really see how bright that fire is starting to look. 
this is not the brightest color. We still go a lot brighter than this, so you can imagine. Once again, we haven't even touched a stencil yet, right? We'll get into that. That'll be next week's class. This week we'll be basically going in and finishing up this color. Now see how right now it looks like we just have a, a flare over here and a flare over here. Wouldn't be a bad idea just to add a little bit of this yellow in here. Just to br broaden that area up, not make it look so thin. And we can bring this fire right off his head and make it look like his head is creating this lick up here. So this is the brightness, this is where the fire is starting and it's coming off his head. Come in here and define his face a little bit more. Alright, so your guys' job this week is to finish up with this yellow-orange mixture. And until we see you guys next week, keep your airbrush going. Spray this, fill this all in, get it all ready. Hope to see you next week, 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, on Saturday. Same bat time, same bat channel, or bird channel, something like that.